practice. Uh, I'm Vince Emery, and for my sins, I put myself forward as co-chair of the group with Joanna Newman. Um, and you can see Joanna isn't here today, and of course, I suspect in the forms of time, a new co-chair will be involved uh, uh, as Joanna's chairing. Uh, the community of practice is, uh, I hope you will agree, proven to be an invaluable source of expertise and resource for sharing information and opportunities in this region. And I would hope that you've read the update paper and that you can see that the unit continues to be extremely active across the uh, uh, However, there's no substitute, of course, from hearing from you um, and, and, and areas where the international unit can add the most value uh, about the challenges that we face in dealing with the MENA region and also about exciting new opportunities that maybe you're hearing about that the international unit can help with. Uh, there's some new faces around the table, I do believe, so I think what we'll do is just do a very quick tour of who you are, which institution you're from, and maybe what you hope to gain from membership of the group. Otherwise, um, we will then subsequently move on with our guest speakers. I'm Vince Emery, uh, Pro Vice Chancellor of International Relations from the University of Surrey, uh, with a lot of interest in, in the Middle East uh, in general terms and North Africa, uh, and having the game to get intelligence from these people. Uh, Ewan Roberts, I'm International Partnerships at the University. We've already had a lot of dealings with our colleagues here from Iraq. I'm Stephen Law from the International Office of Newcastle University. I've taken over the, the region of the Middle East North Africa as of January. I'm using this as a nice introduction. I'm Lucy Green from the Institute of Education. Um, I'm in the International Office as well. And we're really interested in um, uh, some information and sharing and getting some intelligence from the University. I'm Steve from the University of Warwick. I'm a professor in the Media region, so it's perfectly within my very interesting responsibilities. Uh, John Nathan from the International Office at the uh, University of Southampton, uh, also responsible for the Middle East, and we have a um, number of staff in the Middle East, and so we have a particular interest in the Middle East. I'm Stephen from the Media Store for the University. I'm part of the international staff, we've got um, a number of partnerships in the Gulf region, specifically in the previous incarnation, I worked in the Middle East for a couple of months since. I'm Sophie Martin from Regents University. I'm taking over um, the Middle East. My colleague who is doing this was Eric McLean, who might have met her before. Uh, it's a new introduction for me as well, so it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm Melissa Tegu from the International Unit. I'm the Deputy Director, and when Joanna Newman steps down on the 1st of February, I'll be acting as the Interim Director while the recruitment process uh, goes through a permanent post. This is Victor Jiraja from uh, Iraqi Cultural Attention Center. Victor Mayak from Iraqi Cultural Attention Center. This is Maya Nunez from the Iraqi Cultural Attention Center. Claire Turner from the International Office of Imperial College. I look after Middle East um, partnerships and just have the knowledge and the challenges. I'm Andrew Rubin. I'm an academic reader of Islamic Studies in Persian at the University of Edinburgh, representing the International. I'm Karen from our study of Sasha Bradley's University of Dublin, particularly interested in partnerships and general agenda and relationship sharing and things. Michael Green, Director of Strategic Partnerships in the University of Leicester, and uh, we're particularly interested in developing uh, partnerships in the school of the world. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Thompson, I'm the Professor of Social Media and International International Studies. Professor Andrew Rand is joining us from Oxford and the phone. Thank you very much, Ms. Jumper. Andrew Rand, Provide Chancellor of Responsibilities for International Affairs at the University. And we are working primarily in the Middle East and the Asian work in Africa as well. Please join me and apologies if I have to go through in person. I'm Brian Greenwood, and I started back in September in my region. I'm Patrick Kosh from Harvard University. Um, I have responsibility for Middle East and North Africa. Uh, we have a number of links and agreements and partnerships in the region. I'm going to tell you more about the Cyprus opportunities in the region. I'm Dr. Asad Kenimi from the Iraqi Cultural Association. Hi, I'm Dr. Musa Musabi, the Cultural Advisor. Civil engineer, and uh, I work at the, uh, at the 
Sattachi uh, about a year ago, and uh, I was uh, present of the first of the for the last, uh, for the past uh, nine years. Thank you. Uh, that saves me introducing you. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so I, I shall pass over directly to you, and uh, Professor Rose, if I could have time to speak to us about the education opportunities in Iraq. Good afternoon. <coughs> we would like to give you an overview of the uh, attitude of the cultural touching in the heart, about their activities in the UK, and uh, what are our uh, expectations for uh, our uh, scholarships and other schemes of the Ministry of Education in Iraq. To be done in the UK. <coughs> Something about the, our uh, Iraqi culture of Dutchie. It is the official representative of the Iraqi Ministry. And uh, it's also part of the Iraqi diplomatic mission in the UK. The Iraqi culture of Dutchie looks after the Iraqi students in the UK and the Irish universities who are sponsored. Dutch also is responsible for the verification of all certificates issued by the Jewish education companies in the UK and Ireland. The activities of the Iraq cultural Dutch and the, 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 the duties of the Iraq cultural Dutch is first of all is uh, responsible for the uh, scholarships, for the research visits, for the study fellowships. We have also self-funded students. We have uh, some sabbatical degree. That's for this academic staff uh, members of the Iraqi universities. As I said, the verification of the uh, certificates and uh, Finally, the collaboration projects, different collaboration projects with different universities. The Cultural Tachi was founded in the 16th of the last century and uh, it was closed in 1990 because of the wars of Iraq in the neighboring uh, countries. We have a very long history with UK. We have thousands of students and we graduate from the universities in UK. And uh, the Iraq Tachi uh, was closed from 1990 until 2006. It was opened in 2006 and it's working <coughs> now with, uh, with uh, a very active role in the group. Students in different universities, especially to get the PhD degrees in different uh, disciplines. We have now at the Ministry of Higher Education about 4,000 uh, scholarships. This is fully funded by the Ministry. And until now, we have about 1,535 students, most of them studying for the PhD. And we are uh, <coughs> uh, deal with about uh, 90 universities in UK. Uh, some of them, they have many students, Iraq students, and the other, they have related students. The Iraqi students usually get them um, a good set uh, which I think is the the best uh, salary among the Arab world. So there is no problem in living uh, expenses at all for the student. That's why they concentrated on uh, their studies. And now we have uh, about uh, six million dollars we spent monthly we spend it on this scheme of scholarships. And uh, uh, I 
think this, uh, this kind of scheme can be expanded more than what happened now. Now we have 4,000 scholarships and we are uh, planning to have 10,000 students sent to, to uh, different countries. And uh, the most uh, popular country for our uh, students is the is UK. That's why about 60% or 70% of these scholarships are in UK. In spite of all the countries of the visa and the category of dealing with the with the with the with the writers of the students here from different universities. But anyway, most of our students would like to come to UK. Now the the uh, we have collaboration opportunities, different collaboration opportunities. Yes, this is a video of our uh, Minister of Higher Education, who visited the, the Minister of Universities, the Tourists, that was the last, in the last uh, June. I have, I mean, our briefing, I should say, says the Iraqi students are welcome to Britain and noted for their hard work and application to their studies. <laughs> يعني تقرير العلمي أن الطلاب العراقيين مرحب بهم في بريطانيا وهم كل ممتازين في الدراسة طبعا ويعني نعم في بريطانيا هم يرحبون بهم وإحنا نرسلكم زيانين من طلابنا ويوجوالي سين the best students the best marks and the best skills for for بريط يعني عادة من يرشح للبعثات بالحقيقة هم أفضل طلاب العراق when we nominate the students for scholarships we usually the take the best students. Right. Yeah. And how many scholarships does Iraq have for students around the world? And how many of those come to Britain? The large percentage come to Britain. Now we have about 1,350 students, postgraduate students, all over UK. أما عدد البعثات اللي أطلقناها في العام الماضي هي عشرة آلاف خلال مدة خمس سنوات. The number of scholarships which will be which will be executed will be ten thousand during the next five years. أرسلنا من هذه الخمس آلاف حتى الآن ألف ومئتين. We sent until now one thousand two hundred out of these ten thousand. بعض هذه البعثات تروح للولايات المتحدة الأمريكية. Some of them go to the US, USA. وكان عندنا اجتماع في العام الماضي في شهر شباط مع رؤساء الجامعات الأمريكية بحضور من وزارة الخارجية ووزارة التعليم. And we had we had a meeting in USA in Washington with some of the actors of universities in addition to the Ministry of State. رغبة الطلاب على العموم للدول الغربية وبالذات المملكة المتحدة والولايات المتحدة هي الأكثر وإلا أقعد الطلاب إحنا في جميع أنحاء العالم. Most of our students would like to go either to UK or USA, but anyway, all all countries are open for our students. Yes. Uh, the, the opportunities, uh, first of all, is for the undergraduates to go to BSc. We have the activation agreements. Sometimes you call two plus two, sometimes you call one plus three, sometimes you call one plus two plus one. And uh, this is, as you can see, uh, uh, we have the uh, <coughs>
The other uh, postgraduate studies, we have two, two types of studies, of course, the MSc and the PhD. We have now uh, a proposal or a scheme of uh, getting the MSc in application agreement of one plus one. One in Iraq and one in the UK and in between there's an English course for them. This is this type of model has been uh, now in negotiation with the Nottingham University for the College of Pharmacy and uh, maybe it can be extended to other uh, uh, <coughs> subjects like or, or engineering or engineering and medicine. <coughs> and uh, for the PhD, as you know, many of our students now study for the PhD in different universities, as you can see. It. And these are the numbers of uh, PhDs in different universities. We have uh, in Newcastle, for instance, about eight students. And uh, we have also in Cardiff and uh, in Sheffield, in Nottingham, Leicester, and uh, Sanford, and so forth. And the numbers, of course, increase to the this axis, the x axis. And we have some few students at different universities which, uh, uh, which are not shown on this uh, picture. Of course, the reason behind that some universities are good students, are students, while the others not, are some of the obstacles and challenges. The The obstacles are summarized as follows, mainly in these four issues. The PAB proposal with the isolation of the Iraqi higher education sector over the last decades. Of course, this needs a certain proposal to cover the needs of the Iraq. The English language with the Arabs, with the Arabs problem and the UK border agency with the problem of this. Some of the universities are very quick in response. That's why we see that they, they attract more students, more high students, while the others are very, uh, very slow in response to the education of the student. And therefore, the very little students can be uh, accepted. Uh, there are also some problems with the uh, British universities in which it creates some obstacles in, uh, in accepting the students. For instance, we have, we got final offers, the student can get final offers from the, from the international office or from the university, while the academics uh, respond very, very slowly to this uh, admission. Uh, we have some of the universities, they have decisional course, which we are quite happy, of course, because this course is decisional, because the problem of Ireland, as you know, is, is a real problem. While the other university, they don't have decisional course. So if, we, if they plan to, to open decisional courses, this will attract the Iraq students to join these courses and then uh, they join the academic state. Uh, also, the tuition fees and bench fees. Tuition fees, some of the universities, the universities are uh, flexible in uh, the tuition fees. They used to take for the three years, while for the extension of four years, they don't charge the student any, any tuition fees. Or a very small amount, like 200 pounds or 250 pounds, because the student is in the process of writing up the, the thesis. So there is no requirements within to have tuition fees while you go to the facilities of the, of the university. Also, most of the universities nowadays, uh, they fixed their uh, uh, fees during the, the period of study. 
while the others, they used to increase it uh, year by year according to the inflation rate. Sometimes they increase it more than the inflation rate, sometimes by 25%. Of course, our regulation does not allow us to pay the tuition fees for the existing students by more than 5% every year. That's why this is also a problem with some universities, while the others, of course, we have some, some ROI in which the, the prices uh, stay fixed during the period of stay. <coughs> These are the, the different uh, uh, academic collaboration directions, as we said, the ESC articulation one and the service uh, security. Security. The MSC, we have various scholarships, we have articulation agreement, we have also research visit students, and for the PhD, we have also the uh, same thing, uh, but we have also other joint supervision and research. The priorities. First of all, the priority is to accept the PhD students and different uh, disciplines. The second thing is to accept our students, our medical students, and to get the higher degrees or to get the um, RCS for instance. Here we have a great problem in getting our students in medical studies uh, to our admission because of the regulations of the medical schools, such, such as the GMC or uh, the or other kind of uh, uh, requirements. So we ask the Minister of Universities to ease these regulations in order to get our students to get uh, uh, an opportunity to join the university in the UK. Of course, he promised to do so. He gave a special offer for all these, and our minister asked him to uh, give us the same offer like all these. And we are waiting for that. And now we have about 500 scholarships allocated for medical studies. They are waiting for the acceptance, for the admission to come to UK. We have another project that scheme of academic staff training and research visits. These are uh, planned for one month. Our academic st uh, staff in Iraq, different universities, used to come to Britain uh, for one month. And, and a program of training or um, to upgrade their information about the teaching facilities, about the teaching ways, the, the method of, of uh, research, topics of research, uh, the, the, how, how, how you uh, make an examination, how you make the examination in the papers, how you, how you try or plan to supervise the students, uh, shadowing of the uh, similar position such as like, such as uh, Head of departments, views, and so So, this is uh, the academic state plan. The same thing is for the recent visits. We allow our academic staff to come to UK universities or other countries for one month also together with their students. Their students are allowed to stay for six months, and the, the supervisor is one month to follow up the research, the research of the student for this, this particular students are uh, done their degrees in Europe and they have a chance to come to the UK for about six months to follow up their research. And the, the BSC, as you know, the articulation agreement will be close to Antoine Mosman. We have prepared a letter of India, which is very uh, they have very little items, and uh, 
that can can be signed by any university with the capital of Dutchie. Just to to make it like easy, how to send our students, how to deal with the students. Uh, and we have many, many universities signed this uh, uh, ROI in a very simple uh, form. And uh, I think accordingly uh, we can we can send our students very quickly and we can accept we can accept our students according to this ROI. This ROI is uh, approved by the Ministry of Education and will come to also by them. <coughs> we have a new scheme and a new opportunity, collaboration opportunity, uh, what we call the International Development Council. This is this uh, approach uh, is dealing with linking the Iraqi cities with the cities for different for different issues like surfacing. universities, traffics, building um, uh, materials, different issues. So, <coughs> if you can see this professional uh, council committees, and these are the different issues which we are seeking to link the Iraqi cities with the UK cities, or make twin. These different issues, of course, they can be can be studied by any city or by any university. We prefer as Dutch or Dutchy to link our cities to the certain university in the UK and the university can go to the different for the different uh, authorities in the in the city or in the UK to get the, the things going to uh, work. The benefit of this project is that we <coughs> have the local governments. They have very good budgets. And uh, these budgets can be used to, uh, to uh, support these activities, different activities. So we don't deal with the central government problems are routine. Uh, they have their, their needs and allocated for this purpose. That's why we would like some universities to act with some uh, cities in Iraq and they act as a coordinator. The system, as you can see, this is the uh, Iraqi uh, governor, governorate, and uh, then we can, uh, and this is the British. University and we can work together in order to get the system working. We call it IBC9 or IBC10 also. Uh, this is a project proposed to the population method. As you can see, the Iraqi government can give all the data and information to the government to the to, to the north side and the side will suggest a certain way of collaboration and uh, uh, this new can uh, stay going until we uh, get the uh, issue required.
just to to have a look on the, on the universities in which there are some some of the campuses. We have twenty eight universities, public universities, and we have planned to open another fifteen universities in the five for the next uh, five years. In addition, we have uh, about 38 uh, public uh, private universities. <coughs> but these are the main universities now in the Thank you very much for this thing.